Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited to journey with you as we learn how to take your health back. We are coming to you live from our Think Tech Hawaii studio in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. Today, we will hear from Hawaii's diva of song, Melvin Lee. Melvin will share her gift of music and how she heals many with her voice, including healing herself. Please welcome Melvin Lee. Aloha, Melvin. Aloha, Wendy. <laughs> so good to have you on. I uh, make it a tradition that we're going to have you on at least once a year. And usually it's about this time of the year where everyone's all festive, and so are you. So let's get started, Melvin. You know, I remember Melvin Lean in a long red evening dress playing at the Ala Moana Hotel. Please share with us a little bit about your memories while there. I, I had, I just, uh, I think it was just a, a time in my life where I needed something like that, a gig like that. I lasted about 12 years there at the Ala Moana Hotel. And it was, I went through a lot over there and we, and they just hung on with me. You know, they kept me there no matter what. When the United Airlines went on strike and nobody, everybody's showrooms was empty. You know, we went through that and I had only one couple in the audience one, one night, you know, and, uh, but, but I did the whole show for them anyway, you know, wow. it's times like that. And then of wow. course the show was always packed. It was great. Yeah, I remember going to see you there, and um, that's amazing that, yes, you're a true showman, so, of course, the show must go on. Whether there's one or a packed house, you're going to perform like you're performing at the Grand Wood Opry or something. Just yes. every, every day goes on. Every show goes on. That's a professional, which you are. So you're not just a diva, Melvin, but you have so many talents. What brings most joy in your performances? Is, is knowing that I can reach their hearts. You know, uh, whether it's through my music or spiritually or, you know, just making their lives a better music always does. It's a healing, a healing type of, uh, you know, recovery for anyone, you know, who's going through a lot, whether it's good or bad in their lives. Music does that. It calms you. Right. And, you know, in that photo, um, the faces of Melvin, I mean, so you're not just a, a, a performer, but you're actually you're a comedian because <laughs> i have many times where just even just you and myself we just talk story and you just you're a jokester or you're on stage and you got everybody warmed up and rolling and then you warm them up further with your voice so i know that that's part of your whole uh, genre of who you are I'm, I'm a prankster too you know yeah so. i know that <laughs> <laughs> i know that so that's why i got to be careful with you what i say because i know if i say something you're going to do them or you're going to prank you're going to prank me so i know i know already because i i'm like you too okay remember now whatever you're thinking i think in the other side the same thing okay <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah i know we have a photo of you and uh rodney casimero oh. i need to honor this man rodney casimero i know that he's a dear friend and i just um just please share some fun memories that you have with with Rodney. Yes, that that familiar photo photo was in in uh, Kohala. We did a show together in Kohala during Christmas time. In fact, I think it was yeah. And um, we dressed like Tira and Blala, you know. <laughs> so we were dressed. I, I wrote a tattoo on my arm, you know, like an evil with tattoos, and, and we acted real Tira. And every, we had the audience going crazy in Kohala. And you know, Kohala is a small town. People, the show starts at seven. They're there at four o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I told them? I told them, I said, hey, what are you folks doing here? You better go home and check your house. I see somebody robbing your house, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I'm not going to laugh because, you know, when you were performing at the Elks or wherever you go, I mean, here in town, I try to get to your show at least an hour or so early so I can have a great seat. And you know that and you're... All your friends are also waiting in line with me, just trying to get in. So I truly understand that. So no laugh at us. Huh? We just like we like being a part of your stage. We like sit on your lap and sing with you. We want to hear every joke coming. What you should have stepped on my toe at the Alamoana Hotel so I can remember you. You know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then we wouldn't probably be friends. You'd be probably still pissed off at me. <laughs> hey. 
You even broke my toenail. What's the matter with you? <laughs> so, no, I'm not going to do that to you now. <laughs> I love you too much. And look, you still remember me. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yes. you know, you're on stage with so many icons of Hawaii. Another male legend that you performed with is Willie Kay. You must have some very special memories with Brother Willie as well. His dad played guitar for me on Maui when I did some gigs over there, you know. Yeah, that's how I got to know him. Willie was young, of course. But uh, Willie, he, he, he's talented. He came from his dad, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a gene that he had. And, and no matter what he sings or plays, he's so, that talent is so overwhelming. It is. His, his performances were overwhelming. And, and I told him so. I said, you know, you make everybody's hair stand up when you sing and you perform because yeah. you're a great performer. And right. he told me, he says, well, I wish my hair would straighten out. He told me, he says. <laughs> <laughs> if he straightened it out the hair, we wouldn't have recognized him. But, you know, like with Willie, right, Brother Willie, when he would be on stage, of course, you would expect the Hawaiian, you know, and all the great songs. But when he started to sing opera, OMG, right? I mean, yes. his operatic voice was just incredible. And we waited always to hear that come out of yes. him. Right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. He was so down to earth. I just love listening to him and miss him dearly. Truly miss him. I do too. I miss him dearly. Hawaii misses him. The world misses him. Yeah. It's embedded in our hearts and our minds of his style of singing and performing. Right. Right. And uh, so we're so blessed that we got an uh, opportunity to share that um, with him. Were you with him um, within the last year before he passed, before he went to heaven? Yes, uh, because he did. He performed at the um, Hilton Wine Village, mm -hmm. and uh, and we went to see him that time, and and it was just, it was awesome. It was just awesome, wow. and uh, I'm not knowing that that was the last time I would see him. Right. Right. Yeah, miss, miss, miss him truly, truly, especially like at Christmas when he would sing all the Christmas carols and oh, we yeah. go to his Christmas concert. Nobody yeah. does Oh Holy Night as good oh. as really. Oh, you wait, know? oh, wait. Yeah, I agree. I have to agree with that. Yes. Wow. So I've seen you perform with many others on your stage. So tell me about these other these other crazy buddies of yours that I when I saw, uh, I was going to see your show a lot and see wherever you were performing, these guys were with you. So tell us about your buddies. I think one of the funniest moments was Rap Ripplinger when he came to my show at the Alamoana. And he was so tongue-tied. I was giving out those lines one after the other. And he was like, ah, ah, ah. And he says, you know, Melvin, you're the only one that can do this to me. He said, <laughs> whatever he said, I came back with another and the audience was in, they were roaring, you know, but he was a great talent, another great talent. Wow. And so how about that guy, um, uh, was it Keeks? Is I, I see his Keeks there. Why, Keeks? why Kiki? Keeks? Well, I only know him as Keeks. He moved to Maui now. Well, Kiki Hugo? Yeah, well, yeah. A yeah. book is an author now, you know. Oh. But he writes Blackie for me, yeah. Yes, yeah. I remember him very well. And then always Tito. Tito's in that picture with you. Tito, yeah, Tito Veronovis, yeah. Yeah, he's, and he still performs too, right? He played for Loyal Ghana for a long time. He also played oh. for me too at the International Marketplace. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about a little bit about your days with Loyo and the fabulous four of you crazy tiras. You mean the, the divas? Yeah, the divas. Uh, the, the funniest part was when we went to Hong Kong. Oh, my gosh. And we went into the other side, you know, you're not supposed to call. And, and you were scared. We almost didn't come out of the, you know, the um, communist side, I think it was. I don't know where we were. But we, we went in and we went shopping. And we all bought. We said, oh, look, here's some, uh, you know, some Gucci and all that bags and everything. <laughs> so we brought a whole bunch. We, brought, we knew it was fake, but, you know, uh -huh. it, it looked so nice, yeah? So, right. Wow, nicely made. When we brought it to the other side, I went to pull the handle. The handle broke and inside was newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's one expensive laughed. newspaper you bought. <laughs> <laughs> we laughed. We had a good laugh. We had... It, it was more than that. The stories from there is just fabulous, you know. Wow. So even <laughs> even the rubber band lasts longer than the first then. <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> so that's a good tip, guys. Don't be buying that stuff. You come true, you won't get your hands whacked, I tell you. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so, be careful. <laughs> be careful. Hit, hit, the hit, 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 hit. <laughs> if you don't get afford them, don't buy them. 
Yeah, right. really. Look at paper sack. <laughs> Better, right? Last longer. <laughs> I did that one time. I did that one time. It was a cancer, for the cancer uh, awareness. Uh, pro, uh, it was an auction in Hilo. Uh -huh. And they only bought maybe about seven uh, items. And I said, where's all the items? They said, oh, well, this is all we could get. And I just bought a beautiful handbag from these Koreans, you know, <laughs> beautiful shop. It was a beautiful handbag, all bling, you know, yeah. brand new. And I had yeah. all my stuff in. And so I ended up, I said, do you have a paper sack? They had one from, you know, that, that market they have there in, in, in Big Island. Yeah. Anyway, so they got the Japanese market. But anyway, so I put my oh, OK mark, OK, K, something like that. I so I put all my stuff inside the, um, in the package. And then I wrote with a felt pen, Gucci. <laughs> and, I, and I auctioned my bag off. <laughs> then I auctioned my watch, I auctioned my ring, I auctioned all but my earrings, on, my earrings. Yeah, I did, just so they can make extra money. <laughs> and I went back, I went on to, I was Aloha Airlines that time, and they said, Naveen, what is that? I said, it's my Gucci bag. <laughs> but, but it was it's... the real deal, right? It wasn't a knockoff, it was real. <laughs> and, and then girlfriend, uh, the K store on the Big Island is KTA. Yeah, KTA, that's what it was. It was big, but it was with Gucci over it. <laughs> oh, wow. So also, I know you're from Molokai, and I know there's another angel from Molokai, and her name is Raya Hell. Oh, yes. What is it like performing and hanging out with her? Because she has a lot of family history with music as well. Uh, she comes from a very talented family, the Helm yeah. family. You know, George Helm and all of them. And you know, I, I one day we per, she was performing on, on Molokai and I had already, you know, stepped down from the platform and everything, you know, kind of easing back already. And La Ratia was rising that time. I went on stage in front of all the, uh, the Molokai people that were there. And I said, Ratia, I pass my torch to you, you know, and just remember to keep your feet to the ground and know where you came from and always appreciate that, you know. Wow. Where you come from, your roots. Yeah, she never yeah. forgot that. Yeah, she's wow. she's very humble, sweet girl. I love very her. sweet. Yes, and very humble. And she's not humble. like real. I mean, coming from Molokai, I'm not putting them down, but she's real. Like, um, she's not. She's not like Pitta. I mean, like, I guess like you. Like I mean, me. You know, like I'm me. Like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, she can be. Oh yeah, she can yeah. be. <laughs> like, you know, like she can be. Of course, we know when to be Pitta, and we know yeah. when to be babies. Yeah. I know that's why it's so cool because uh, like we, we if we don't open our mouth we're good right we look like we're from the east side but when we open our mouth oh you know where we're from <laughs> right <laughs> yeah but Ry Ryatea is a sweetheart is a gem and I just love it when she sings her falsetto voice and just yes just incredible talent and great family history I just love it really really love it so you know Melvin I know you sing all genres of music but I know you have a passion for jazz. Where does that passion for jazz come from with you? I started with a jazz uh, uh, band in, in Waikiki. That was my the first band that I, uh, the first band I performed with was actually guys from Nanapuli. Yeah? But then when I got into Waikiki professionally to sing in Waikiki, at Hilton Hawaiian Village, a garden bar was my first place. And they were a jazz band. And they played all kinds of genres, but jazz was really uh, a big, Thing. And that's how I learned how to sing jazz. I had a good, good teachers and the, all the great singers would come from the mainland, you know, would come and visit to Hawaii and go to the garden bar. And, and that's how I met all of them. And I, working on the SS Lurley, the ship, you know, the gosh, the cruise ship and the Mariposa. I met all these great singers like Sarah Vaughn and Carmen McRae. And, and wow. then I got to do a show with uh, uh, Nancy Wilson here. And Vic Damone, I did shows with them. It was wonderful. I went to Japan, did uh, on the same show with um, Frank Sinatra and, and Shirley Bassey. So it was a great experience for me. I learned from you know, those were all my teachers, just watching them. Wow, no wonder. And you have such a passion when you sing that, when you sing jazz. I mean, I can just feel it. Um, have you ever gone to the Grand Ole Opry? Of course, I sang there. Yeah, I, and it was. It was wonderful because um, it was my birthday, and and Slim Holt sent thousands of orchids in my honor, and roses were sent to me and everything bouquets of roses for my birthday from Hawaii. 
So I pass, I had them pass all the flowers out to the audience in, in the Grand Ole Opry. And wow. they had never seen orchids before, a lot of them. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, and so wow. I sang, they sang happy birthday to me, the whole audience. Wow. How special is that? And so did you sing um, <laughs> on your old country? No, I sang crazy. Oh. Uh, in that. And, and they, um, and Patsy Klein's, uh, her, producer became my producer his oh. name was Owen Bradley yes and he was a producer of like um Brenda Lee you know uh -huh. you know that singer yeah and and many others and Conway Twitty and you know, all these great singers that were there I mean it was awesome meeting and then I got to be friends with Loretta Lynn wow. and yeah and Jeannie Pruitt and Skeeter Davis and all these great singers yeah and Dolly Parton and I of course did a show together television oh. special yeah Oh, which one was that? Share it with us. The one with the, she's um, uh, she's uh, what do you call that? Mount Olomana, and I'm uh, Kapiolani Park. Oh. <laughs> oh, excuse me, what is that? Send us the if link, look, girl. If you look at our chest. She's Mount Olomana, and I've got Park. Wendy, you're slow. No, <laughs> I wanted you to give us the graphics. <laughs> it was it was great it was great singing performing with uh, great people like that you know they of course and even till today you when you were performing you have always by your side that great bongo player bongo drum player who's that oh, guy oh you mean uh 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 stuart uh stuart what am i saying no. don stroud don stroud don stroud yes Sorry? He's an actor. I know he is. That's what I'm saying. He's a famous actor. I mean, he, I see him on Facebook. He's posting all of his pictures with like the likes of Clint Eastwood. And, 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 yes. Everybody. Yeah. Yes. Everybody he performed with. I mean, it's like crazy. And yes. I, I know he always performs with you. And I love he's, seeing him when you call him up. A, he's a sweet, sweet person. And, you know, very humble. The first time I ever heard of him was he was in a very scary movie. It was filmed in this in this desolate um, uh, hospital, and he was the killer, yeah? And, and oh, I was so afraid when I saw, when I finally met him person, I said, you, you made me scared, you know, when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> but he's such a sweet person. He's God. such a sweetheart. I mean, ultimate sweetheart. And yeah. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm glad that he's sharing his history because he lives right here in Hawaii, and he was with, just like you, with so many famous people, but you know, because he played the second role, um, people may not have know who he was or is, but now that he refreshes our memory, OMG, every time I see him, I just gotta give him a hug. It's like, hey, you somebody, yeah? You right? should have him in your program one day. I okay. shall, I, I will, because, uh, but he said he's filming, like he's always filming Magnum and Hawaii Five O, or, you know, Magnum now. So when he's not busy, maybe he said he will, but he has a lot of history behind him. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. just as colorful as you are. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to bring us to something a little bit more serious. So ha, the breath of life. So I know you have a special um, presentation that you want to do for our audience. And uh, I want to just um, ask you to share with us what you're doing in this photo with your ipu. Well, let me tell you, first of all, um, um, wait, let me get this over here. First of all, I... I used to teach hula in, in Tahiti. I had a big halal and I had about 180 students. And I used, I taught them hula kahiko and hula awana. And nobody knows them. A lot of people don't know that over here in Hawaii because I didn't, I wasn't the, the kind of kumu hula that, you know, compete and all that. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was just, they just wanted to learn how, how to dance hula. So I taught them and it, it came by mistake, really, because I never, I never dreamed that I would be teaching hula, you know. And, uh, and, and you see, in Hawaii, it came in my dream. I'm not the only one that had my emotions in, dream, in my dreams. It's, uh, uh, you know, great kumuhulas like um, O'Brien Eselu and, uh, right. you know, I could name some others, we are, you know, emotions. But anyway, so I'm gonna chant for you just a small one yeah, that I taught my, my yes. Yeah. yes. So, excuse me, so while I get into the mode, yeah, okay. 
Ayala Otele, Hava Ikea, Kea, Amaila, Ima, Kilea. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. You should do more of that, Mel. <laughs> no, I'm retired now. And my, oh. you know, they call me Mami Hula in Tahiti. I told mm -hmm. them, don't call me Kumu. You call me. You come oh. everything else. They call me Mami Hula. Even the oh. mamas call me Mami Hula. <laughs> oh, what a reverend name. <clears throat> yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. They're, I my love baby it. They're my baby Hulas. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Yes. So, so here we are today. You are, I remember you started a Silver Fox Club. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. We're going to get yeah. together soon. Yes. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, I, I saw you started you and your, your sidekick, Ivalani. Ivalani say you, you guys have these the Silver Fox Club, and I thought, oh, not yet, but one day, maybe one day I'll be joining you, but I'll just be watching all of you and what, all the fun you guys have. It, so is this such, it is such a great, great opportunity that I, I when I saw, when I saw my hair changing, mm -hmm. I thought to myself, oh my gosh, and my friends were all dyeing their hair, a lot of them, yeah, and when I, when I was, I was going to keep coloring my hair, but it's not healthy, you know? Yeah. 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 And so... I, and I, everybody said, oh, Melvin, you know, I said, listen, we got to be proud of who, who we are and how we look. God gave us, you know, this is the aging process. We just got to take care of our health. The main yes. thing is our health. Never yes. mind the hair. It's the health, you know. And so when I saw a lot of my friends, I said, hey, I'm going to start a club. And I told <laughs> Ivalani, I said, Ivalani, I'm going to start a club called the Silver Fox, Wahine Silver Fox Club. And she said, what a good idea. I said, yes, because, then, you know, you got to get your hair uh, white, too. So she started to get her hair <laughs> white. And then all my other friends, so I put, got all their names. I made certificates and I have their yes. card, card. And so, but there's no monies involved. Mm -hmm. You know, no more president, no more. I'm just a founder, yeah? But I'm right, the leader. Right. And no more, um, uh, you know, fees and no more yeah. anything. Like that. All it is, we just, I pick a restaurant. So that we can give our local people some business, yeah? Yes. Healthy restaurant, of course. And we all get together and everybody pays for their own lunch. And we just vala ao and, and share stories and recipes and crafts and stuff. Our ideas yeah. and our lives. We talk about our lives and we become like dear Abbeys to each other. Right. Yeah. Oh, I know. I see you guys when you went out before. I see all the fun you're having. I thought, gee, I can wear one wig and join you guys a lot. You've got to wear a wig. wig. I'm going to wear a wig. Okay. <laughs> okay, so... Boss Fox said I can wear one wig and I can come. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in that photo with you with the mu'u, the yellow mu'u, this is how we are so accustomed to seeing you on stage in your Hawaiian attire with your ukulele in hand, Melvin. So are you self-taught with all your instruments? Because whenever I see you on Facebook or wherever, you're always on an instrument. And I'm like, how in the world can you know how to all this music and the ukulele and sing it? so talented so were you self-taught or were you given yes lessons? when i was three years old my grandfather made an ukulele for me mm -hmm. and he, what he did was he played and he put it in my hand and i copied him i copied him yeah and then i got older and he taught me how to play the auto harp wow. and then and i just he just played and i played and i can hear it yeah and then the guitar he played slack key and he played guitar i grabbed the guitar and i played yeah and even with keyboard, Loyal told me, he says, Mel, why don't you go and play piano? You know, you play piano. I said, but I never took lessons like you. I cannot play like you. She says, Mel, you can do anything you want to do if you put your heart to it. I said, yeah, of course I know that. And so I started, because I played piano, but only in the key of C, yeah? yeah? So now I learned the other keys, but I don't know how to read notes. I never did. I never took lessons of any kind. No vocal, no musical lessons or anything. God gave me this gift. And right. I, I'm using it now, you know? Yeah. yeah. So we have to mahalo you because, yes, you're using it um, consistently and you never not and you never let anything say, no, you can't. And I know uh, we're, we'll talk real brief about you, your health journey. But I know even during the lockdown, you made it a point to entertain not only Hawaii, but the world. And um, this is how the world gets to enjoy you. And you're on Facebook every sunday behind your keyboard um what does this do for you as you sing into facebook and you see people pop in from all over the world what does it do for you melvin it is so wonderful because they get to hear our hawaiian music and our and our how we are you know i mean we <clears throat> we just 
and I do in their different, I sing in different languages, you know, also as well, yeah. And to, to know that they're there, yeah, uh, that they're watching me, all of us to Norway, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was so surprised and it was so nice. And, and gosh, where else? In Indonesia, all over, you know, Japan. Uh, it, it's a wonderful thought that they can tune in, you know, hone in on my, my, my music that I can present yeah, to them. And I know it makes them happy because from how they write to me, yeah, the things that they say. So I, I'm very thankful for that. I thank Jesus yeah. for that because I got my voice, yeah, still. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you can see all the reactions. Um, you have your regulars, you know, and um, as much as I can, I'm popping on and I'm listening or I'm just listening and I'm working. But I see all your fans, your friends, your ohana from all over and the comments that they give to you. And so we get warmed up because of that as well. It's not, I mean, not just you benefit, but you are um, healing all of us through your music and all the good wishes that people are spend, uh, spreading when they share it with you. So thank you and never stop. <laughs> and you know, there's one more thing I want to tell you real quick. Yes. I keep myself, I worry I'm going to be 80 next year. Yes. And I worry about if I should lose my speech or if I should have Alzheimer's or if I should, you know, get, I, I'm forgetful of course, but not as, as bad as I, I, you know, would think that I should be. But mm -hmm. you know what I do on my iPad? I'm playing games like um, mindful games, not yes. games, you know, yes. it's word games, yes. number games and things like that. And I'm very comp competitive and it keeps me alert. And I read, you know, and I, of course, I read my, my word, daily word every day. Yes. And uh, yes, have to. And, and I keep myself in sync to, to know that, okay, this is right. And if I, if I, like one time I went into the kitchen and I forgot what I went into the kitchen for. So my daughter, my daughter said, ha, ah, mom, you forgot that what you went in, went in there for. I grabbed the can of corn and I opened it up and I said, no, okay for corn. <laughs> so I had to, I had to eat corn. <laughs> but you know, it's things that, it's frightful. It really is, is scary. Yeah, it is. It is. And so that's, you know, that's, we all know as we get older, the first thing is the memory. We think the memory goes. So yes. What you're doing is you're doing exercise for your brain. And that's so important. That's why, like, yeah. for us, I, we, I play mahjong. You know, I play dominoes. And anytime you want to pick up a game and I'll come over with my dominoes, we play dominoes. But these are all brain strategy games that we're going to continue to exercise our brain. And that's why you are who you are. Every Sunday, I know it takes preparation to put on your show. You have themes. You sing the songs of themes. You I make my own posters. Background. Yeah, I make you posters. <laughs> yeah, I know. So you know, those are great activities. So it's so important that we have that. It's so important that we can continue to do what you're doing. You know, um, and don't ever stop because that also is great therapy for you and keeping you young. Yeah, and crafts. Yeah, yeah. and crafts. You know, and yes. and I I I tell my friends. Eat healthy, yeah. Eat vegetables and fruits yes. too. And I yes. said, and do a craft. I, I do. I make earrings. I make your jewelry. You know, I make jewelry. Stuff. Yes, <laughs> I, I made this too, of course. Yeah, and then yeah. This one you're day. never not busy. You're always busy, so you're yeah. gonna be forever young. A crochet, I knit. You know, yeah. I do mm -hmm. things like that. I, I have I know. to. And you have a very loving husband who nurtures you and just keeps you on your toes as oh. well as you keeping him on his toes. So it goes both ways. Yes. But, you know, Melvin, of course, our time has come to an end because we don't can see who will talk first and who will talk more between you and me. But you've been watching Taking Your Health Back with Wendy and my special guest, Melvin. We need to say mahalo to you. And thank you for talking story with us and making our world a much better sounding place to live in and please keep on blessing us with your god-given talents of song i'm wendy low and we'll be back with another edition of taking your health back mahalo melvin and aloha everyone aloha i love you wendy love you too
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.